This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 24, Section 2, Introduction to Hydrocarbons. And remember, a hydrocarbon is just a molecule that only has hydrogen and carbon. So your objectives is to be familiar with these hydrocarbons. Again, a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. We're also going to talk a little bit about isomers and how they're identical compositions. They have the same amount of hydrogens and carbons, but they're going to have different structures. So that's going to be called an isomer. Again, I recommend you pausing the video, filling out the blanks in your packet, and then playing to hear my words. So these are your three basic kinds of hydrocarbons, the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. And the alkenes will have single bonds, the alkenes will have a double bond, and the alkynes will have a triple bond. And notice you had to draw that third one in there into your notes. Don't know how to do that anymore. Uh, and then if we look at saturation, this cannot add any more hydrogen atoms. So your alkanes are going to be your most saturated, and your alkenes are going to, of course, be your most unsaturated, that we can add hydrogen atoms to them in a chemical reaction. So if we look at these three things, or these three types of hydrocarbons, which one do you feel is going to be the most reactive? Hmm... Yes, the alkynes are going to be the most reactive because the alkanes, if we think about this, they are going to be your strongest. They're going to be the most nonpolar. They're going to stay together as a molecule as much as possible. Just like sugar and water. Yes, sugar dissolves in water, but those sugar molecules are going to stay as a sugar uh, particle themselves, uh, keep as a molecule. Versus if you think about salt, Salt also dissolves in water, but it's going to break apart into ions. Those, those bonds between the Na and the Cl are going to break apart and form Na plus ions and Cl minus ions, where your nonpolar molecules, like sugar again, um, they are not going to break apart. They're going to stay together, so they're going to be relatively strong. If you have strong bonds, that means you're not going to be very reactive. So if we think about this, your alkynes are, are the least um, unsaturated, we can add a lot of hydrogens there, it's going to be most reactive. So what's an aromatic uh, hydrocarbon? Most of those uh, contain a ring, okay? So those are you're going to be carbon-carbon bonds that are going to be connected as a ring. Uh, so you have two kinds of uh, hydrocarbons, again, your aromatics, which will be the rings, and you have this aliphatic uh, kind, which are your alkanes, your alkenes, and your alkynes again. So here are your simple alkanes. Again, we talked about these prefixes, meth, eth, prop, but, uh, uh, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec. So those are your first 10, um, and that's going to be the number of carbons that are related. Uh, so you again, C, C, 1C, 2Cs, 3Cs, and so forth, all the way down to 10. And then notice your ending, all of these are A and Es, because these are all going to be singly bonded together. There's going to be six uh, for hexane, six carbon um, atoms bonded, singly bonded together uh, with your H, uh, 14 H's attached to it as the surface, right? Remember we talked about the backbone, uh, all of your carbons together would be the backbone and your 14 hydrogens would be the uh, surface. So here's, again, the structure. These were using just the single bonds or the lines as your single bonds. So we have meth because of one carbon, uh, eth because of two carbons, prop because of three carbons, and again, they all end in anes. So that's how they would look. So if we think about some properties of these uh, carbon organic compounds, notice as we increase the number of carbons in our molecule, the melting and the boiling point are also going to increase. Hmm, why do you think that is? Well, there's more bonds to break, right? That's it's very simple. Sometimes you have to think simplicity. Why would it take more energy to break the high, the carbon carbon bonds um, as we increase the number of bonds because there's more of them to break. So if there's more of them to break, it's going to need more energy uh, to, to make that um, separation. Uh, so of course, as we increase uh, carbon atoms, we're going to increase the melting and boiling points of those substances.
So what are isomers? Again, we talked about same formula, same amount of carbon and hydrogens in their formula, but their structures are going to be different. So if we look at something like C4H10 has two isomers. So they both have four carbons, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if we count up all the hydrogens, we're gonna have the same amount of hydrogens here as here. Now, what's the difference? This is just a single chain of carbon, butane, just like you learned. Where this, ladies and gentlemen, hmm, we have three carbons as our longest chain, and then we have this what's called an attachment. So I like to call this 2-methylpropane. Why? Because if I count the carbons, 1, 2, this attachment is attached to my second carbon in my longest chain, and it's a methyl group. Why is it methyl? Because meth would mean one carbon, and then it's an YL because it's an attachment, not just methane, um, and then we label this as our longest chain. One, two, three would be propane. So two, because it's on the second carbon of our longest chain, propane, and this is a methyl group. And notice they also uh, name it iso, so we're not going to get too crazy about uh, some of the other kinds of ways you can name these, uh, but just so you're familiar with that. So if we look at um, uh, uh, molecules that have five carbons and 12 hyd uh, hydrogens, now we have three isomers because we have the longest chain of pentane, but if we can take one of those attachments and move it somewhere else. Now notice, I cannot take this carbon and attach it to this first carbon. If I do, the longest chain would still be five carbons together. So what we have to do is we have to take that carbon and actually attach it to the second carbon to make a difference. Difference. So this is why this is called 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where the butane comes from, the longest chain of carbon. And again, it is a methyl attachment, and it's on the second carbon. Now, you could also say, well, it's on 1, 2, 3 carbon. It would be 3 methyl butane. Well, when you number the carbon chain, which we're going to talk about soon, when you number that longest carbon chain, your attachments are always going to be on the smallest number carbon. So same thing here. So now if I took this particular carbon and I took it away and attached it here, it would be the same way. Uh, it would be the, still the four carbon chain. It would just be down. Or if I took it and attached it here at the very first carbon, same thing. I have one, two, three, four uh, carbons as your longest. So the only other way to make an isomer or make a totally new structure would be to take this carbon attachment and now put it to the same uh, carbon in the middle. So now again, our longest chain is three carbons. That's the propane. Uh, now we have two methyl attachments. That's where the dye actually comes from because there's two of them. And both of them are on the two or the second carbon in the longest chain. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail when we do the book work together in class. So why is this not an isomer of uh, C5H12? Again, I was trying to explain to you that the longest chain is still five. There's um, three, four, five. So even though it's attached uh, above or below, um, it doesn't matter where that carbon is attached, it still is part of that longest chain. So again, you might wanna stop the video. This is a lot to write down. So how do we name Okay, nomenclature just means name. How do we name alkanes? Well, the first thing we want to do is find the longest chain that's going to be our base or our skeleton. We're going to number the carbons so that if there is an attachment, okay, if there isn't a group like a methyl or an ethyl group, it's going to be on the lowest numbered carbon. Then you're going to name each group. So again, these alkane groups are called alkyl groups. Okay, that's why we named them with the YL. And if you have more than one of the same group, Again, we're going to give it a prefix like die, just like we did. Um, and other groups are going to be named alphabetically. So again, we'll see that as well. So here are some groups. Uh, if they are just by themselves as an alkane, you would name this, like CH4, as methane. But because it's a group, we're going to change the methane to methyl. Two carbons, ethane, actually becomes ethyl, and so on. Then, of course, there are alkanes as rings. So why is this a ring? Because there are three carbons attached to each other, but they're attached together, I like to say circle, right? That's why they're called it a, a cyclo, sickle kind of, um, or cyclo, right? Because it's a ring, it's a circle. Even though it looks like a triangle or a square, they're still connected together as like a ring. 
So these are some reactions of alkanes. They're usually unreactive, like we talked about before, right? They're, they're very saturated. There's not going to be too much reactivity going on. They're strong because they're nonpolar. Uh, but combustion reactions, okay, so what's a combustion reaction? Well, a combustion reaction is a hydrocarbon. So these are three different kinds of hydrocarbons. They're all being added to oxygen from the air, right? And what they are going to produce is carbon dioxide and water. So take a moment, pause the video, balance these, and then check your answers. And we will talk about how we do this 25 da, uh, slash 2. So 25 halves basically is, is what this is about, 25 halves. So we'll talk about that as well. <clears throat> oh, same thing here, seven halves. Uh, hope to answer some questions when we're doing our book work together in class.